G'day Gear Junkies, Jason here. For as long as I can remember, I've always loved groove-based music. It doesn't matter if it's funk or soul, rock, even metal. If it's got a funky drum beat with a great bass line and some rhythmic guitar playing, my ears instantly prick up. The first serious band I was ever in was actually a funk rock band, and we really loved the Red Hot Chili Peppers and Mr. Bungle and bands of that era. So I got to thinking recently about the sorts of pedals that I like to use when I play funk or any sort of groove based music. So I put together a little pedal board and I'm going to take you through each pedal and tell you how I like to use it for this particular style. Now just in case you're interested, all of the tracks you're going to hear with drums and bass are originals. They're either from songs that I've written or they're jams that I'm currently working on to turn into songs. So if you like any of that stuff, please let me know and I'll see if I can finish it off for you. But before I begin, if you like this kind of content, please help me out by subscribing. So here's my clean sound. I'm playing my Deluxe Strat going into my Fender Deluxe Reverb Amplifier. As you can hear, it's completely clean. There's a tiny bit of reverb from the amplifier. So the reason I've chosen my Strat for this demo is that Strats are pretty standard when it comes to funk. That's not to say that you can't do this on a guitar with humbuckers or P90s or a Telecaster or something like that. Uh, but I've got five different pickup options that I can use on this guitar and I'm going to use four of those five for this demo today. Now the first pedal I want to talk about is quite possibly the most important in this rig and that's the compressor. Today I'm using the DoD Milkbox compressor. This is from the 90s. Uh, a few of you are probably saying that's a Jason Lamb pedal. Uh, I've heard conflicting stories. So Mason from Vertex VertexFX, uh, who I've got a lot of time for, he says that uh, DoD at this time were owned by a larger parent company called Harmon, who also owned Digitech and they also owned DBX. Now apparently, this is a DBX style compressor uh, that's modeled on the DBX rack units that were used a lot in the 80s and 90s. I'm gonna be using the compressor and leaving it on for all examples. Now the milk box compressor here can be a little bit confusing because of the names of the controls. So basically we have level, compression, EQ and attack. So if I turn up the compression, for this first example, I'm going to use position two, which is the bridge pickup and middle pickup together. So at the moment, I'm on the neck. And this has a really great percussive sound for rhythmic playing. In truth, you can use just about any compressor you want. What a compressor does is it brings down the volume of the loudest notes that you play and it brings up the volume of the softest notes you play, thereby compressing the signal and limiting your dynamic range. Why this is important? Well, funk is a very rhythmic style and a lot of the rhythmic picking that you might play might get lost in the mix uh, or it might be very nuanced. By bringing that up in volume, uh, it makes your percussive playing much more prominent in the mix. For a lot of people, when they're going for a funky guitar tone, they almost always go for a clean tone. Now, for me, a lot of the greatest funk guitar parts ever written are slightly broken up. They're slightly dirty. So for this reason, I'm going to add an overdrive uh, into the mix. So I'm using the JHS Morning Glory. Now this is a blues breaker style overdrive, which is usually very dynamic, but I'm going to run the compressor before it to limit its dynamic range. Now it's just going to add a little bit of grit so I can play some dirty funk. So when using overdrive with this type of music, I don't want the overdrive to overtake my sound and turn it into a full on rock sound. I just want it to add a bit of grit while still maintaining that upper mid clarity to bring out my pick attack. So without it, it sounds like this.
Next up, I need some filtering. Now, you may use one or all of these effects that I'm about to go through, but these are the main uh, categories I would go for. So either a phaser, these kind of had their heyday in the 70s in funk music. Uh, I've got wah, uh, again, used a lot in the 70s and sort of made a bit of a comeback during the 90s. And there's also envelope filter or slash envelope follower. Now this is actually the pedal that I'm going to use. Now this one works a little bit different to the other two because it reacts to my picking dynamics. So for that reason, it has to go before the compressor before it completely cuts off my, uh, my dynamic range. I've covered the Qtron in another video, so I'm not gonna go into too much depth about it. I've set it to bandpass mode because I find that sounds the best for guitar. And I've also turned the drive and the Q up almost all of the way. So I've got that sort of quacking sound. Now, it's a dynamic effect, which means that the harder I pluck the strings, the more the uh, effect will take hold. So if I pluck it lightly, um, you won't hear the full effect. If I pluck it a little harder, you'll hear it open the envelope right up. Now this effect doesn't sound particularly good with chords, but it really does help to make single note lines stand out. And you can use it with drive as well and it sounds pretty good. Part of the reason I wanted to use an envelope style effect is because you can't really use them in many other styles of music. They really are made for funk. And in fact, I actually prefer them on bass. Next up, I've gone with some chorus. Now I've picked my favorite non-boss chorus that I could find, which is the Pass FX PX65. This is their version of the DoD FX65. The great thing about chorus is that you can use it to thicken up rhythm parts, or you can use it to play single note lines. And I've changed to the neck and middle position for this one. For my last pedal, I've decided not to go with any ambient effects, so I'm not using any reverb or delay, I'm just gonna use a little bit of reverb from the amp. Uh, I'm not saying that you can't use these effects with funk, because you certainly can. Uh, I just don't tend to use them a hell of a lot. What I would use more would be a solo boost, and for that I'm using a TS-9. Now I love Tube Screamers particularly as a solo boost, and I think they sound great in front of a Blues Breaker style overdrive. The two just work really, really well together. So there are a lot of pedals out there on the market that actually have that sort of blues breaker and tube screamer combination because they work so great together. Now I'm gonna use this for any soloing that I'm gonna do, but also if I want to play some riffs that just need a bit more grit, kick on the tube screamer and it acts as a bit kind of like a, a riff boost or a solo boost. So as you can see here, I have the Tube Screamer in between the compressor and the Morning Glory. Now the reason I have that is because if I put the Tube Screamer at the end, it's really gonna drastically change the tone of the Morning Glory when the two are being used together. It'll act as a massive filter. So what I wanna do is filter the sound going into the Morning Glory, and the Morning Glory is still my main overdrive. So this is the Morning Glory on its own. and with the Tube Screamer. So 
As well as adding more saturation, the uh, the tube screamer takes away some of the harsh uh, presence of the uh, morning glory. So it takes away a bit of that pick attack and gives it more of a singing quality. And the two work really, really well together. <laughs> Now here's an example where I'm going to use all of the effects at some stage or another. So here's my funk pedal board in its entirety. Uh, if I could change anything, I'd probably add a wire in there somewhere, uh, but I don't have one of those little mini ones, which uh, I think would fit on this board really nicely. So if there's anything that you do differently uh, or that you disagree with or that you think I should try, just let me know in the comments below. I'd be really interested to hear. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. You can support this channel by going to the Middle Age Gear Junkie store and buying some merchandise. And you can also join the Middle Age Gear Junkie Facebook page. Other than that, my name is Jason. Have a great day. See you later.